Welcome to Sipping on Excellence. This is Coach KJ, and I'm here with my man, my dude, the Doc. And this is where we will be discussing the exceptional that is absolutely attainable. My friends, here's to living that extraordinary life. Cheers. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. All right is what they say. All right is what they say. What, what, Didn't we just get through talking about the microphone? We did. Like let me ask you something, man. Where does where does that come from? All right, all right, all right. What comedian wasn't that? That was um, that was Kevin Hart. Oh, Kevin Hart. We haven't talking. quoted him in a while. Right, exactly. <laughs> that was Kevin Hart talking about his dad. That's what his dad. Oh was saying. yeah. All, okay. all right, all right, all right. <laughs> Spoon. <laughs> yeah. Wearing them old school sweats like that right. with no drawers on, <laughs> no pockets. <laughs> Hit them right in the head. <laughs> Woo, shit. <laughs> anyway, oh, we forgot about them. Hey, man, welcome to another episode of Sipping on Excellence with uh, Leonel Hunt, Doc, Coach KJ. Coach KJ. <laughs> Kenneth Coach Johnson. Kenneth Johnson. <laughs> Life coach extraordinaire. The man, the myth, the legend. <laughs> I don't know about all that. I'm working on it, though. I'm working on it. Right, right, right. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. <laughs> <laughs> always come back to it, right? Always. It's, yeah. It's always fitting. Um, <laughs> right? You know. Oh, man. Good to be back here for another episode. You man. see, I'm still sweating, man. I, I've worked out, took out my mama's trash, and then I ran <laughs> over here. <laughs> so I haven't stopped sweating yet. <laughs> man, I'm telling you, man, it's good to be back here having this conversation, oh, man. Always, always. This, is, a, this is always a good, a good sort of culmination of the week, the day of just. It's a setup. Being able to sit here and just get shit off our chest, yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah. And I think it boils down to a lot of people don't do that. People don't have... No. It, again, y'all, the reason why we do this podcast, and I'm talking to everybody in YouTube land, um, communication. We talk about it endlessly because it's never... There's never enough communication. Ever. Ever. It just... There's not enough communication. Why? Because there's not enough listening or people don't want to share. And because they're scared. What happens? What people think. And what happens when you get all that shit bottled up inside and when you don't have an outlet to communicate? You get stressed the fuck out. <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah. You know, it was funny because my. You know, I you know I even have my own therapist. You know, I do therapy, and as we were talking today, yeah. And one of the things that he said, "Oh, I see you with the with the with the water with the bubbles." And as I'm opening, I was like, "Oh, wait a minute, got a little air out, got a little air out, got a little air out." Got a little air out. You know, and he said, "That's an analogy of life, man. <laughs> you know, you just got to keep letting just a little bit of air out, let the bubble settle down before it bubbles over." Because we all walk explodes. around. Yeah, shook up like up. that bottle of champagne. That's right. And you pop that cork. Woo! <laughs> First of all, you get a cork in the eye, <laughs> right? But seriously, it's yeah. just that force. That's that's that stress that's built up inside. Mm -hmm. And I don't care who you think you are. Everybody manifests stress. Yes. I used to always say, I live a stress-free, drama-free life, and it's because I don't invite stress in. But that doesn't mean I'm not stressed. Correct. You know what I mean? Yeah. Just because I don't actively see it or if I see it, I stop it. Yeah. Doesn't mean that that <laughs> shit doesn't. <laughs> but the funny thing is, like, he don't know that I know. I know when he's stressed. It's there's certain aspects start to happen. You know, he recognizes way too many details of other things. It's like. <laughs> Start getting bubbled up, because <laughs> like, I'm, I'm so used to just dealing. Yeah, you know, you just fuck it. Okay, I got a deal. Yeah. I got a deal. I got a deal. And you don't realize that bottling all that shit up ain't healthy. No. And so, Coach and I today wanted to talk about stress. Do you have it? How do you know? What are the challenges of? not addressing it you know what do you do when you're stressed how do you prevent stress or just do you know how you yeah. know and i think 
we're not experts in any of it. We're just, like we always say, we're just two grown-ass men that's lived a little bit. <laughs> that's the reason why we have a lot of drug addicts. <laughs> yes, and alcoholics. Mm -hmm. You know, and so, <laughs> we just, cheers, brother. <laughs> cheers. We ain't sipped with y'all in a while. Yeah. But, that being said, you know, I'll start this off with a story. And it is my own story. Okay. So, I don't know if, you, you know what Bell's palsy is. Yeah. Facial paralysis, mm -hmm. et cetera. Nobody knows the exact cause of it. Some say it's viral. Some say it's, but it all, they think, is kind of, can be stress-related. I was one of those unlucky individuals that had Bell's palsy three times. Mm -hmm. um, kind of unheard of. Once, I was a resident. And me, I enjoyed residency because I'm working. I'm learning yeah. my craft. But, you know, it was not uncommon for me to work 36 hours straight. Whatever. No, mm -hmm. no sleep. You just keep rolling. Right. Mm -hmm. And at one point in my residency, I got Bell's palsy, you know, and the doctor asked me, like, what do you think is going on in your world? I'm like, nothing. I'm just chilling. I feel fine. My face is just droopy. <laughs> So it went away. <laughs> okay. and, and I didn't think anything yeah. of it because I'm doing me, mm -hmm. right? And then fast forward, you know, many stressful things have happened in life that to me, I guess looking back were probably stressful. But mm -hmm. at the time, I'm like, I'm just I'm fucking handling it. About 10 years ago? No, nah, probably less than that. Probably eight years ago. Okay. Happened again. But this was, there was a lot going on at work, all this stuff, and everything came to a head all in one day. And I was like, and I could feel it was coming. I was like, dude, again? And so then the third time, I didn't think I was stressing at all. I think the third time it just popped up. But what I'm realizing is that that was probably my body's manifestation of stress. Mm -hmm. Or, for example, keep it simpler. Yeah. When you travel, why do you get sick when you travel? Not because you're on a tin can with a bunch of other people sharing the same air. Think about the perfect storm. You're on a tin can mm -hmm. for hours. Right. You have the stress of travel. Mm -hmm. So your body's already stressed, you know, and you go and nobody ever gets sick going anywhere. Most people get sick coming back because you've traveled vacation. You're out of your elements. You come back. You're traveling, you're stressing, and now you're stressed thinking about, oh, I got to get back to work. I got to do this. I got to do that. All of a sudden, that immune system ain't working like it should. Boom, you get sick. Now, you know, there's going to be all these doctors and people out there that would be like, well, he, that's not exactly true. <laughs> you get what the fuck I'm talking about. Right. <laughs> you know what I mean? Right. And so. But they don't have an answer for it as well. No. You know, so these, I think, are just some of the physical manifestations of stress. Mm -hmm. You know, people, I see people every day come to my office with back pain, neck pain. And I always tell people, they're like, how do I make this get better and all that? Aside from the exercise and things like that, I was like, the one thing I don't have an answer for that you need to do is lower your level of stress. They're like, how do I do that? I was like, if I had that answer, there'd be a line from here to... Right. Chile. I wouldn't be seeing you. <laughs> Waiting to hear that answer. Right. You know? I wouldn't be seeing you because no. I'll be rich telling that answer. You know, and so the body, and I always tell people, most people carry their stress in their shoulders and neck mm -hmm. and in their lower back. Mm -hmm. And, oh, my life is really stressful. Whether it's work, whether it's whatever it is, it's going to kill you if you don't treat it. Right. It really is. You know, and I give my example because... I always like to tell people, I'm chill. I just, I don't let shit get to me. But my body every now and then says it, different. Yeah, it'll let you know. I mean, I've, I've experienced, my story is mm -hmm. currently, you know, dealing with the back and all the stress of the back. You know, it's always there. What degree? I don't know. But what I've learned and what I'm learning is that inflammation is a motherfucker. Yes, 
you know, it's like the back is like, oh yeah, 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 we working, we working, yeah, we 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 trying, we we trying to survive, and then all of a sudden I have issues with inflammation in my elbows, inflammation, you know, I have issues with my elbows every once in a while, my ankle, my knee, but it just travels. It's looking for places to go and hang out. Well, the thing is, stress attacks the weakest points, mm -hmm. and if you already have a back problem, if you already have a neck problem, mm -hmm. you know what I mean. If you have these issues already, what is stress going to do? Oh, I'm going to hang out here. Because your whole body manifests stress. Mm -hmm. You only feel it at the weakest points. Mm -hmm. You know, some people may just, ah, I'm tired. Or they may right. just say, I don't have an appetite. Right. Or my stomach feels a little upset. Think about this. <laughs> and maybe most of y'all don't realize this. When you meet that cute girl or that cute guy <laughs> and you get butterflies mm -hmm. butterflies aren't that feeling of love and excitement that feeling that butterflies is actually a stress response mm -hmm. because your body's stressed out like oh this guy's this this guy's cute or this girl's cute and she makes me feel some kind of way and so as time goes on with that same person you start chasing the butterflies which is actually a stress response and since you're no longer stressed about the anticipation of being with someone and you're just with them, you don't get the butterflies, so you think you don't love them as much. Love isn't stress. Butterflies is stress. Right. People are like, what? I thought butterflies were a good thing. No, but stress is being in that relationship. <laughs> <laughs> After it punched you in the mouth a couple of times. <laughs> Damn, now what? <laughs> right. But everybody says, you know, how do you get rid of stress? What do you do? What's... What are some of the most stressful things in life? If you, if you look at what most studies have shown, the biggest stressors in life, death of a child, mm -hmm. death of a spouse, divorce, loss of a job. Mm -hmm. You know, I think those are like the top four life stressors. Um, and the death of a spouse or a child, you can't, you, you, that's just there. How you handle losing your job, how you handle losing money. And then there's like 10 other things that they've listed on this list of top stressors. Well, those stressors are different for everybody, you know, and everybody's going to manifest stress differently and everybody's going to handle it differently. Correct. And I don't know that any one person is great at managing stress. I think, you know, there are various methods that, that will help you. It doesn't get rid of stress, but it will definitely help you manage it better. One we always talk about all the time, exercise. Mm -hmm. Nobody feels stressed the F out when they're done exercising. They may walk to their car and then all right. that shit jumps back on them again. And they're like, well, exercise... Isn't that stress? No, well, it's a stressor. But it's a physical stressor. It's a physical stressor. But why do you think people say, I need to go to the gym and burn this off? What are you burning off? Mm -hmm. You're not burning off just, nobody has too much energy that they have to burn off. That energy is anxious stress. <laughs> you know what I mean? I just had this old visual. <laughs> you never see little kids, I got to go burn off this energy. <laughs> no, it's when you feel like I need to go punch something. So you go to a boxing class. I want to go lift some weights because it just, or I want to exercise because it helps me relax. It's not helping you relax. What it's doing is it's allowing you to channel that stress that's manifesting in your body physically and turning it into a positive driving force. Mm -hmm. You know, other ways to, to get rid of stress, which we talk about all the time, is number one, figure out what's causing you the stress. Can you do something about it? Number one. If you can, make the change. If you can't do anything about it, easier said than done, but don't let it stress you. Fix the things you can. The things you can't. Dump them. Get rid of it. Yeah. Or just deal with it. Yeah. You know, um, we talk about communication. Kenny, you're stressing me the fuck out. You know how great that feels 
if you can actually say that and then say how and why and the other person not get defensive and be like, please tell me more so I can understand. How much stress relief would that be? Oh, my God. Oh, my God. That would be. I mean, you don't have to say it just like that, but, yeah. you, but you get what I'm saying. Yeah. You know? Yeah. It, no, it, seriously. It, I always say it's easier to get to it to go through it versus trying to run from it. You, you want to get through it. Let's right. go through this together. Let's examine it. Let's, let's see what's going on so we can pick up the parts, put it together. Because people may not even know the person that you're, that's, if somebody in particular is stressing you out, they may not even know it. Yeah. Because you got it all bottled up inside. You're just walking around angry. They're thinking work's got you upset or whatever. Right. You're not sharing. You, you know, but if I tell you, hey, man, look, or say, you know what? Look, man, this has been bugging me. Can we talk about this? Because it's, I'm, I'm just pent up because you're stressing me the fuck out. Yeah. If you can't say that to somebody or he, you're making me angry, you're making me anxious, you're making me this. If you can't say that to somebody and that other person receive it, they don't even have to receive it well. They just need to be able to receive it and try to understand why you feel that way. You just getting it out and putting it out in the open will cut your stress in half. Yeah. You know, and then... Once you once the problem's out in the open, it's hard to ignore. Yeah, you know. Yeah, because it's it's the elephant now in the room. Right now, you said there, now yeah. you said hey, there's a problem. Yeah, yeah, and it, and and you can meet that easily by just saying, listen, I need to share something with you. Yeah, because that will invite them in versus telling them, and because you're you're going to be stressed out also after you say you are stressing me the fuck out. So why don't you invite them in and say, hey, listen, I need to share something with you. Take a seat. I need to share this with you. You stress me out, bro. Or better yet, <laughs> you don't even have to say that person is stressing me out. Coach, you're not stressing me out. Our situation in this moment is stressing me out. Right. Mm -hmm. So it's not them the person. It's their actions or right. inaction that's stressing you right. out. Right. Or that's making you angry or whatever it may be. But what people don't also realize on the f other side of that is that that stress of excitement, that stress of love, love can be stressful. Mm -hmm. Happiness can be stressful because it's, it's, it can be physically stressful. People are like, what does that mean? Because it's not really looked at as stress. It's your body's responding to something and you may look at it as stress. Because it's an unfamiliar place for you. Good so point. if you've never been there and you're like, I don't know how to be happy. So once you are, you start to stress about happiness and the loss of happiness. And that stresses you out. Mm -hmm. And so that's kind of kind of wild, right? Yeah. You start thinking, why am I so happy? Oh, my God, I'm happy. Oh, my God, what happens if it goes? And then you just you go back to that stressful place. of I don't know what I'm going to do if I'm no longer happy. Yeah. Instead of just being happy. Yeah, that, that, that goes right into when we t I talk about it all the time, imposter syndrome. You know, that, 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 that denial of what you deserve. Yes. That denial of what is innately yours that you can own and be okay with. Yeah. You have to be able to own those moments and be fine with it. Like, people are shocked. Like, oh, my God, oh, my God, I can't believe I just made this extra in in income no you're owed that bonus yes that's yours <laughs> exactly you should be wondering why i haven't got these before but then they start to stress about well what happens if i don't get it next year right stop St start being that's the problem no one wants to be everybody wants to become yeah <laughs> they're chasing something they don't have they're being ahead be here they're letting the future dictate their present state. Right. That doesn't work. And it's either one or the and other. And they're letting their past fuck up their present state. <laughs> <laughs> Without just letting the present dictate the present. What, one thing I always <laughs> state when, um, when I'm coaching is you're either running from something or you're running to something instead of being where you are. Yeah. It's just... 
it, it, the past it always, is your education. It always it always baffles me though, man. And <laughs> then people wonder why cancer runs rampant the way it is. Mm-hmm. I'm a firm believer in that it isn't the cause. Illness people like to say what comes first, chicken or the egg? Does stress cause the illness or does illness cause the stress? I think you get sick for whatever reason. Stress on top of that illness makes it manifest itself a hundred times worse. And then because you're so sick, your body's stressed, your mind gets stressed, and then it just makes it worse and becomes a vicious yeah. cycle. Stress creates free radicals in your body. Well known. It's well it's known. Fact. Well known fact. And the first thing you want to tell people, hey, relax. But you can't. No. Because you can't put yourself <laughs> in their mindset. <laughs> you know? Yeah. You can't put your when I was sick, if somebody told me, Hey man, chill, you're gonna be fine. Cool. Not what I want to hear. Right. What I want to hear is what can I do to help? That's it. Mm-hmm. And let me decide what's going to help me be fine. Right. <laughs> you know right. what I mean? Dog, I got you. What do you need? Yeah. It's that simple. I don't need shit. Cool. Yeah. Hey, man, I'm around. You need something? Yeah. Because, see, I didn't catch you until the, until back, the, end. the back end. Yeah. yeah. But it's one, it's, but I came to you when I needed help or mm-hmm. when I thought I needed help. So that sometimes you got to let people go through what they're going to go through. Even you, even though you see from afar, dog, something's wrong with you. You yeah. know, you just kind of, all right, I'm going to help you without you knowing I'm helping you. And then I'm going to let you go through it because I think you need to. And then I got you. Right. You know, but there's a certain amount of stress that drives people to excel. And which we talked about before um, in our challenges episode. Mm-hmm. It drives you that that challenge, that stress of the challenge may push you, but sometimes you get so wrapped up in your own ability to handle that challenge that you end up failing because you're so stressed about failing, mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, mm-hmm. and it just it, it's it's always interesting to see how people handle it. I mean, you and I both come across people that the littlest bit of stress, they freak the hell out. Can't handle it. They lose their mind. Like, I don't know. Just just stop for a minute. Dude, you're going to be fine. What do you... Yeah. You and I have talked about a couple of people who are that way. Somebody I'm trying to get to see you. Right. He's that way. Right. You know? And it's like, dude, relax. You're working... And it's always the worry, and this is what gets me, the worry of something that hasn't happened yet. <laughs> I think that's probably the biggest thing. Yes. Most people don't stress about what's happening now. They stress, no. they worry about what hasn't happened yet. Yeah. My parents are aging. What happens if? They Enjoy them. They're here. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know? My husband works a lot. What happens if he cheats? Has he? My husband's never home or my wife goes out a lot. What happens? I don't like her friends. Do I worry? No. Right. That comes part of the trust issue. That comes part of the, he's trying to provide. She's trying to. Which is their own personal problem. Yes. That they're not willing to deal with. It's easy to put it on someone else. You're stressing about something that hasn't happened. Yeah. Well, what if? Stop Stop stressing about the what if. I get it all the time. I operate on somebody. Well, what if this happens? Or what if after surgery, this goes wrong? But it hasn't. Correct. And if you put it in your mind that this could possibly go wrong, then you're stressing about it and making your recovery harder. How about we cross that bridge if we get to it? Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know you're not setting yourself you're not setting yourself up for success if you always worry about what's going to go wrong right you can prepare yourself for any scenario but you don't let it consume your thoughts 
You don't let it consume the way you live. Mm-hmm. I going back to my back. Yeah. I remember the day I went to go get my MRI. After you called me, we talked. I said, oh, my God. Now I know. And in those moments, because of the lack of stress Mm -hmm. of dealing with it, knowing and, you know, getting the MRI, for those moments, I actually was a little pain-free. Yeah, because you you were able to... Relax. Yeah. Well, these are these are the things I need to work on now. Okay. Cool. 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 I got it. I felt a lot better. And anytime I'm dealing with a patient, like especially when I deal with patients that have cancer or something, I keep going back to that because I just recently had to tell somebody about that. Mm-hmm. It's the hardest thing first. Here's what you have, mm-hmm. and you see them just. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. Yes. Now. Take a breath, because here's our plan to do this, 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 and this to make you okay. And you just see that whole look of every single time. Oh, I bet. Even if I, even if they both know that, okay, I'm sick as shit. But for a brief moment, they're like, whew, okay, we got a plan. Sometimes just having a simple plan, whether it's going to work or not, but just having a next step takes pressure off. Correct. You know? I don't know what tomorrow's going to bring, but today we're going to do this. And then we'll see. And we'll stay consistent with this until it's time to move on to the next thing. Yeah. And when I, when I operate on somebody, they're always like, well, how much better I'm going to get? Do you think I'm going to be better? And I always tell them this. The whole goal of surgery is to make you better than you are right now. And you have to ask yourself, if surgery, is surgery worth going through if I'm 5% better 20% better, 80% better when I'm healed. If you tell me I need a certain amount of improvement for, to make this worth it, I'm going to tell you you don't have surgery because I can't guarantee you a certain amount of improvement. Mm-hmm. I can't guarantee you improvement at all, but I can say the likelihood of you getting better is really high. How much better? There's too many factors. The surgery, how much you listen to me, how much you follow instructions, right. all of those things. Right. The surgery part is your, the only part that yeah, I can control. Your due diligence for yourself. Yes. Which is the crazy part because you're doing it for yourself. And people don't realize if you just follow instruction. <laughs> for yourself. Things will be less stressful. For yourself. Yes. <laughs> I want to follow up each time with that because it comes back to you doing you. Think about when you're in school and... People are talking about, oh, school stresses me out. I'm so worked up. And I'm like, why do you think that is? You have a test next week. Why are you stressed out about the test next week? Oh, because all semester you haven't been studying. The guy that you see going out partying the night before the test is not because he's so much smarter than you. It's because he was more better planned out than you. Right. He may have been studying all semester, so the night before, he's like, I got this, because you know why? I learned it already. Mm-hmm. You're trying to learn it the day before. Mm-hmm. Some people thrive off that stress. We talked talk about, about your that. brother and myself. Yeah, the challenge. Yeah. Some people, that's just how they work. Me, I don't need that in my life. <laughs> 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 and then I talk about, when I say I live, people always ask me, you know, what's going on with you and your dating life and all that. And I'm like, I live a stress-free, drama-free life. I was like, my work brings enough stress in my life for me to be like, that's enough for me. Yeah. You, as a potential partner, should be not be a source of stress. Right. You shouldn't stress me out because what I'm going to quickly do is look at you and be like, cool. out of all the things that can go, whoop, you're probably the first. Mm-hmm. Because... The main stressors in my world aren't going away. I got, you know, 70 patients a week that stress me out. I don't need you to stress me out more than all of them. (laughs) You know? So you need to know. Because they need you. I'm like, because right now, I don't have any drama in my life. Right. If you come to bring drama, you might as well just not come. Right. I don't need that. I don't need to accept you and the drama. I'm going to accept you, and you can leave the drama elsewhere. 
People are like, well, that's why you're single and happy. Yeah. Now, you want to come in. Now, yes, there's going to be some times where there's going to be tension, but tension isn't always stress. No. Because you can figure that out. How? By communicating. What? What? Say that again. By just having a conversation. Right. You know? Sharing is caring. It really is. As simple and as <laughs> whatever, it is simple. Sharing is caring. I give a damn about you. It shows that you give a damn, even when it's tough conversations. Because you know that at the end of that conversation, we're going to be good. And people hate when I say this, when I tell them the only reason why you are stressed out mm -hmm. is because you stress you out. Mm -hmm. Your job isn't stressing you out. Your job is a stressor. How you let it affect you is stressing you out. Right. Your kids don't stress you out. Your kids are a stressor. Mm -hmm. How you let their attitude and actions and personalities affect you is stressing you out. Yep. Your spouse is a stressor. Your spouse doesn't stress you out. You let her or his actions stress you out instead right. of just mm -hmm. putting in that buffer. Well, I don't know how to do that. You say that, then that's not my problem. Right. I'm just telling you, it's you that is stressing you. Nobody else is stressing you. The only thing external source that stresses you is illness and environment. Correct. Things you can't control. Right. The people around you, no person should ever stress you out to the point where you get sick. Because you can control how you respond to those people. Mm -hmm. Including work. Oh, this workload is so tough, blah, whatever, and it stresses me. I'm so stressed trying to get everything done. Do what you can. And if it's not enough and you're stressed the hell out, then you say so. And if it continues to stress you out where you're making, getting sick, change your job. Yeah. If you don't change, then you're stressing yourself out. Right. Because it all comes back to management. Yes. You know. Time management, mental management. Same thing with school. Yeah. If your workload in college is so overwhelming that you don't know how you can handle it, then maybe you need to change your major. Maybe this just isn't for you. Mm -hmm. Because the afterlife of school doesn't get easier. It so gets maybe, real. <laughs> or maybe you're doing something that doesn't interest you. Because if you were, I'm like, I had a hor terribly difficult major. But I enjoyed it all because that shit excited me. You enjoyed me. the challenge of it. Oh, yeah. So I wasn't, school you, didn't you stress were, me. You were met with that challenge. Yeah, school didn't stress right. me. Right. You know, and so things that you can do to kind of alleviate that, choose things in life that are enjoyable. Number one, that will help manage the stress. Number two, get some sleep. Your body needs to re-up. Yeah. And on top of that, eat good food. Real food. Eat real good food food mm -hmm. number three exercise mm -hmm. if they just do those three things yeah and cut out the toxic people in your life we don't like that word toxic <laughs> but when it's when they stress you out they're toxic man if they got you running it's time to run <laughs> <laughs> you know <laughs> and they'll tell you when it's time to run oh for they will sure. always for, let you for know. sure what so what i do to manage my stress i exercise i will walk I walk and I drive. Mm -hmm. I'll go for a drive, throw on a podcast, do whatever, listen to music, and just clear my head. I'll walk. I'll go for a five-mile walk. I'll go for a hike. I'll do whatever it is, clear my head, and keep moving. Um, or at the end of the day, I'll flip through Instagram and watch TV, mindless entertainment, to just let me relax before I go to sleep. Mm -hmm. What do you do to handle stress? Well, you know, first thing for me is exercise. Yeah. I will go to the gym whatever time <laughs> and make it happen or exercise at home, do mobility, whatever it is, just movement, get blood flowing everywhere. Yeah. Um, I will go to the spa, you know, 
we'll take one of these coupons <laughs> and, you know, or just go to a spa that has, you know, ice, you know, ice plunge or cold plunge and whirlpool and, you know, sauna. Here's the crazy thing. Getting massage. I'm more stressed getting massage than just not. Yeah. Because I when can, I go, yeah. I go <laughs> like me, me going to a spa yeah. does nothing for me. Yeah. Like I'll go and get a massage. Like I used to have massage, a massage therapist that would come to the house. And by the time she left, it felt great. But I'm like this, mm-hmm. you know, because I can't lay there and just uh, relax and just yeah. let them because there's a stranger in my house there. You know, it's just, yeah. it's all these little things. My mind's working on other stuff. Yeah. And so for me to spend a truckload of money going to a spa and then I'm like, yeah. I might as well have just not gone because I feel better yeah. before I went in. And people will be like, people watching this or listening will be like, oh, that dude's crazy. No, no, no I, I, I've heard that before, though. I've had a great Thai massage in Thailand, phenomenal. Mm-hmm. And it felt good. It loosened up the muscles, but it wasn't my moment of zen. I get it. It just I get it. It wasn't. I, I don't actually look at massage for me. Mm-hmm. I look at it as fixing me. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I'm never relax so to speak but i know what i need to help me kind of rearrange my body i mean like when you've done body work on me yeah that was that worked yeah you know when i've had true deep tissue kind of just do loosen this up those couple times yeah but i don't ever look at a massage as relaxation yeah (laughs) which is wild yeah which is why i love doing body work because it it puts me in tune to the person and allows me to help them realign themselves to feel a little bit better. I have this, have this thing. You always have to leave feeling better than when you walked in the door with me I, with everything. Yeah. Body work, training, just conversation, whatever it takes. But that stress, whatever you're holding on to, I'm trying to remove it. You know, we're going to have conversations while I'm doing body work. Yeah. I'm trying to, re- I'm trying to pull everything out because in order for you to realign, feel better, Look better, yeah. think better. I need you to let go of everything, exhaust everything. Let's pull all this shit out. Whatever, like last week, I said you got to go in that head. I'm like we're gonna take this out and rewire this. And but hey. what people need to realize too: don't use chemicals as a stress reliever. No, you know, like people will say, "Oh, I'm gonna have a drink." Correct. Because it relaxes me. It doesn't really relax you. It just makes you not think about what what's causing you stress. But it's got its own other issues. Right. I like having a cocktail like everybody else. Sip it. You feel good. It right. tastes good. Whatever. You don't use it to drown your stress. Just like some people say, you know what? I'm stressed out. I smoke weed. It relaxes me. I get it. It's probably better for you than the alcohol. Correct. You know. But does it really relax you, or does it just or does the THC just make you not care in the moment? I, I, I describe it as <laughs> you'll love this one: the guy that puts on axe after he left the gym. <laughs> yeah, no, he didn't bro. shower, bro. You stink. He didn't get rid of the problem. He's just He's trying to cover it up. Yeah, you're just covering up the stink. And that's what a lot of the drug use is. You exactly. know, you look that's at it. people who I just I can't deal with everyday life stuff and the easiest way is to try to just drown it out drown it out sort of muffle the noise somebody i know dearly yeah and it took its life life. try to drown the noise Mm -hmm. and people who look like they have their shit together guys you may never realize the demons they're fighting the stress that they internalize Mm -hmm. and i promise you most men are way more stressed out than you think. Because most men, we're not allowed to show you that we're stressed or that, right. especially guys who are married with kids who are running a household, who they, blue collar workers who just go to work every day trying to provide. And you ever see a guy who loses his job, but he's got a family to provide for? He doesn't come home and just sit there like, oh, and wallow in his sorrow when he's the main provider of the family. He just is like, babe, I lost my job, but I got an interview tomorrow. Or 
I'm hitting them streets tomorrow. I'm going to go stand outside of Home Depot. I'm going to do whatever it takes. He's stressed the fuck out because he doesn't know how he's going to put food on the table for you guys. Mm -hmm. But he handles it. And you wonder how long it took him before he breaks. It all boils down to allowing him the space to communicate so that way he doesn't break. Mm -hmm. Women have less problems communicating how they're feeling in the moment. If something is stressing them out, they are quick to tell you, I'm stressed out, stop, just stop stressing me. It's about the approach. Yes. The delivery. We know you're stressed out, running a household, being a mom, dealing with kids, dealing with the work. All of that, yes, stresses you out and you let us know all the time. It's the delivery. Mm -hmm. Sit us down and be like, hey, can I rattle off some of the things that I need help with or I just, I just need to say it. I don't need you right. to help me. I just need to get it out. Cool. We will do that. But you have to be willing to do the same for us. Which is probably why they don't like the words like relax. Or calm down. Calm down. I'm just trying to help. Yeah. They don't want you to help. They just want you to listen. Mm -hmm. And to them, that's help. Go get help. Men and women both. Yes. Go get help. And what I mean by go get help, I told this to somebody this weekend. Speak to a stranger. Speak okay. to a stranger that has no dog in your fight mm. because they can look at you more objectively than anybody in your family, your friends, whoever. Talk to a stranger. They don't need to know you. They just, you, they just need you to like tell them said, the situation. No dog in your fight. At all. That makes sense. Yeah. yeah. Go talk to a stranger. If you really can't talk to the people in your orbit, go talk to a stranger. Call it therapy, call it whatever you want, but go talk to a stranger. And I'm always going to say that because strangers don't give a shit about the underlying issues. They just want you to be okay. It's that simple. Yeah, because if you go to a stranger, the first thing, so what do we need to do for you to be okay? Yeah. That's, at, at the end of it, that's all that comes out. And they're listening. Yeah. Because they're not, they don't have any feelings about you or any feelings about your situation they're objective or as as objective as they can be mm -hmm. a friend can't be objective a family member can't be objective no a, a spouse a partner can't be objective because they're already biased whether they're the source of the stress or you want them to be the source of your peace they're already still biased right so they can only do so much. Right. Right. Which is funny. They're all, a lot of times, especially with a spouse, yeah. it's like they think that they're being an advocate when in, a lot of times they are being the stress. Yeah. And they're stressing out about being an advocate. So basically, you're now in a two-part situation where it's not about you anymore. It's about them not being stressed out, about them being an advocate <laughs> <laughs> right. for you. Yeah. You know, it's, it's, and then that puts you back into a shell even further. Yeah. So now you're in full work mode. Yeah. Overtime. That's Absolutely. stressful. Yes. Yeah, man. Good topic today, man. Yeah. Great topic today. Yeah. And I think, you know, as time goes on, there's going to be more that's going to come up with how to manage stress. There's, there's thousands of self-help books. There's thousands of people who are stress gurus. There's, whatever it may be, pick your avenue to peace. <laughs> pick your poison. Pick your, pick your avenue to peace. <laughs> right. You know what I mean? <laughs> it's what, whatever that is. Yeah. You know, whether you need to read, meditate, talk, exercise. Right. But we'll reiterate this. Exercise. Exercise. Move daily. Eat good food. Clean food. And then know the difference between calorie dense and nutrient dense. Yes. Get sleep. Did I say that? No. Yes. Get Just sleep. Get and four, recognize that you are the source of your own stress. Yeah. 
and make change as needed. Yeah. And that will help you acknowledge that sometimes you're just not going to be okay. <laughs> and that's okay. And that's okay. <laughs> Coach KJ, man, where are they going to find you? Man? They going to find me at Coach KJ Rose on Instagram <laughs> and CoachKJ.com. Where are they going to find you? Well, they got a new profile pic. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Stop playing. Stop playing. <laughs> oh, man. You're going to find me at Leonel Hunt on IG. You're going to find me at huntspine.com. Um, don't forget about the huntfoundation.org. Doing big don't forget things. About them. Doing big things. SOE underscore podcast. Yes. That's the IG. Check us out every week. You'll see posts from our live every week on my podcast as i mean on my ig as well as uh, the, the the show the show as well as my stories and everything about coaching doc you'll find at podcast soe.com oh yeah every week tune in man we oh, are here yeah. saturdays at 11 and every wednesday the new show oh, comes yeah. out <laughs> oh yeah man relieve your stress we out yeah, we out <laughs> <laughs>